We asked an experienced tech product manager to explain to an audience of developers what product management is in 2024 and why it matters. Here is what we came up with. So basically, in 2024, product managers uh, do pretty much the same what they did uh, before. Mainly, uh, there are three pillars. First is marketing, second business strategy, and third is technology. I would say that a uh, product manager is a micro CEO. Uh, in this case, CEO, I would spell like uh, chief everything officer. Because actually, product manager is a manager for everything that is happening in the product. Shortly speaking, the product management is 70% uh, of just common sense and only 30% of special knowledge. What common misconceptions might developers have about this role? Talking about misconceptions, one of the main misconceptions I would like to talk about is that a product management role isn't defined uh, yet. And in various companies, uh, the product management role differs a lot. One of the most common misconceptions is uh, confusion between roles of a product manager and product owner, where product manager is more like strategic and business oriented and product owner is a role in a scrum. It is more about development. As long as product uh, oriented mindset is more a mindset than a set of tools, it means that a developer with a product mindset values a lot. For these guys, it's not necessary to translate from business uh, language to technical language. And when I find those guys and I talk to them, it's just brilliant. How does thinking in terms of value help bridge the gap between product managers and tech teams? Throughout my work, I uh, often see that product managers are tended to be like idiots in a point of view of developers and vice versa, because they don't understand each other, uh, because they think differently. And here is the uh, gap between value-oriented and feature-oriented uh, development, because when we are talking about feature-oriented development, it's more about engineering excellence, it's about the uh, brilliant ideas on how to implement this or that without uh, thinking about uh, how will the user like it and who pays money for it. When we are talking about value-oriented uh, development, it's about what exactly value and what will customers pay for in uh, what value do they get. Can you give concrete examples of the misconceptions? If we're talking about examples, let's imagine the dating app uh, and the engineers working on, over some dating app and they think about uh, rating system or uh, what additional feature to add, or like a button, will it look cool, will it work fast? But they don't think uh, about uh, what makes the user happy. The user sees this feature and says, wow, finally they got it. I'm using it. What is product discovery and why is it crucial to perform it alongside product delivery? Usually when I come to engineering companies, I see that all the effort is uh, on answering the question, how to do this better, how to make development faster, how to do it better. They are not asking themselves, what are we doing and how to do what it is needed to do. So product discovery is an answer to a question on what should we do instead of how to do that. Why should it be done uh, alongside the product delivery? It's because uh, the discovery is not just the task that you perform, it's a process that you do well, continuously improving your product. You're working on it all the product life cycle long. The common mistakes in uh, product discovery in corporate products is that uh, the discovery is done within the brain of the founder of the product. It's, uh, they just say, we have a gut feeling for that and they, let's do it. Or if they do discovery, they do discovery only before getting the investment. Because after you get, you commit on something uh, on the investment committee, after that you cannot change your mind even if you see that it is useless. How can developers benefit from understanding this process? Basically, it's about understanding what you do. Uh, there is a parable about three bricklayers who were asked, what are you doing? And the first one said that, mm, I'm laying a brick. I'm just laying bricks. Uh, I do it to earn for my life. And the second said, I'm just mm, building a wall from bricks. What a stupid question. And only the third one who was uh, doing who was the leader and who did more and more quality uh, said, I'm building a castle. Generally, it's about understanding what exactly do you do and why do you do it for. Talking more practically, it's about making choices for the developers. It's like uh, if you have a couple of options, one of them brings more value to the customer and one of them you like more, you choose not the one that you like more, but 
what is more valuable for the customer. Why is product discovery is so important? I could say that almost every company I worked with lost lots of money on uh, poor product discovery. It's just because uh, making a good product is always making many mistakes. Gartner's research says that uh, from uh, 70 to 95% of the features have been issued are never used by the users. This huge amount of money and effort, your effort, is spent in vain. One secret thing about product discovery is that it's not about tools, it's mostly about selling this to your stakeholders because the stakeholders, the founders or like CEOs or CTOs are the guys who don't usually realize the importance of uh, product work, of uh, bringing that to market because they have engineering foundations, the engineering background, they care about uh, more about development rather than selling that. This is, it's not my job. Okay, marketer, go and, and sell. This is not the way it should be. So as a conclusion for this uh, question, I would say that uh, investing in uh, product discovery, investing in product management and marketing, bringing much more uh, return on investment rather than uh, investing in engineering processes. Why should product discovery be done using AI? Basically, it's because uh, in a previous era, before the AI tools appeared, uh, product discovery was not so affordable to uh, companies. Say, startups, they do discovery or they die. So they don't have this choice. Corporate products, if they do bad discovery and deliver the product that is not being issued or it fails, actually nothing happens. No one will die, no one will even get fired from the company. In the previous era, discovery could be skipped because it's really expensive process and uh, it's not affordable to medium companies, only for big ones, or you do discovery just fast and uh, like uh, invest more time in uh, engineering, in developing, not in discovering. But nowadays with uh, AI tools, uh, just the uh, discovery is much more cheaper and much more faster. How can developers help test product ideas without fully building them? And what techniques are used to validate hypotheses effectively? It's always good to remember that testing hypotheses it's most about failure. Say, if you have 80% uh, uh, failure rate, it is very good. Because uh, average failure rate is 95%. It's like building uh, castles of sand. So you develop something and then it's not used. You then develop something, it's not used again. It can lead really to burnout. Because I know lots of situations when developers who worked over the hypothesis, the, the uh, features that were just for testing, uh, they were burning out. There is huge pain and there is little pain. Huge pain is when you start a product that actually fails. And little pain is when you uh, work on the feature that is not used, but the product survives. It means that uh, little pain brings to great pleasure and uh, little pleasures bring to great pain. Getting back to real life examples, Steve Jobs in 2007 was presenting not a real working iPhone, but a prototype. Actually, when it gets to uh, selling a product that doesn't exist yet, it's more about uh, selling uh, cartoons, selling prototypes, selling pictures. And after when you have sold it and you understand what exactly have you sold, then you can start to develop it. What are the best practices for product managers and development teams to communicate and collaborate effectively? I could say that just love the product managers whether, whenever they seem to be uh, strange, weird guys, because they understand the business and they actually understand how the money has been made, although I understand that for you it's not valuable, but uh, actually they are the people who <laughs> get you the payroll <laughs> because they sell the product. Now, if we are talking seriously and uh, getting back to the value and feature-oriented uh, development and the product mindset, I would say that if uh, every developer has just a little piece of product mindset and they understand what they're generally doing in their team uh, or the company what is doing and how do they deliver value, it brings uh, less uh, conflict within the teams because they stop thinking about just only engineering, but more about 
uh, how they influence on the whole product and on the whole business. They get uh, more business oriented. And the product managers are like providers of uh, this uh, sense. How can a developer be more product focused? Good question, because it's like just asking uh, how can an introvert network more? If they understand uh, why they need it, uh, they personally need it because they are doing the common job with the team and the business, they just start to do that. Think differently. <laughs> uh, why is it important uh, to be more pro a little bit more product oriented or at least understand the motivation of your product managers? Don't think that they are just some stupid people business oriented. It's more about making decisions on what to do, what feature to choose, what to develop first, not be so upset and burn out if the feature that you have developed is not in prod because it's not needed. That's the point. Understand that business is risk. How to practice? Getting back to practice uh, and to uh, developing engineering skills, just learn about the uh, NGX uh, learning courses for AI-assisted development uh, and human intelligence about uh, how to work in the team without uh, getting burnouts. The links will be in the description. And stay tuned!